Moving on to physical exam, what are you looking for? Take us through what your um, physical exam looks like for patients when you're trying to tease out, you know, is this an obstructive um, pathology? Is this patulous? Is this not even related to the eustachian tube? You know, um, is it is it something like TMD or um, superior canal dehiscence or something else? Right. So the first thing to, uh, to to notice is the condition of the tympanic membrane in comparison to their symptoms on that day. So if they've got a retracted tympanic membrane, I'm talk, talking about a non-fixed, you can see that it's, it's uh, retracted in by a negative pressure, not an adherent type. That's indicating negative pressure. You can insufflate it. That's indicating negative pressure. Is there a middle ear fusion? So these are all obstructive eustachian tube dysfunction, very clear signs. If there's evidence of negative pressure or middle ear fluid, that's, that's obstructive dysfunction. Now, other possible hints would be uh, scarring, tibial sclerosis, uh, fixed retraction pockets. That's indicating that they've, at least in the past, had obstructive dysfunction. It may not be current. So evidence of negative active pressure is, is the most common obstructive dysfunction finding. And then you'll cross-correlate that with, with testing. Now, if the tympanic membrane is normal looking and their complaint is just a, a problem when they're barrow-challenged, I only have trouble when I fly, you can easily have a normal tympanic membrane. So in that case, your physical findings are not, you know, with, with just your otoscope and head and neck exam. Until you use an endoscope, you won't have any evidence of the problem with that one. And then if you suspect patchless, they've given you a, a, a history that, uh, oh yeah, uh, this autophony, I, it clicks, it pops, I hear echoing. That's where we look for the ipsilateral nasal breathing movement of the tympanic membrane. So I have them uh, hold their nostril closed on the opposite side, mouth closed, and they're breathing in and out, kind of the rate and depth that you would for uh, a lung examination, if you're listening to the lungs auscultating. So not, not, uh, super forceful because you, you could open your eustachian tube if you do it too forceful in a normal person. So we're looking for just some relatively deep breathing, relatively rapid, and can you see the tympanic membrane moving? And if you do, that is pathognomonic of patulus. So if they have no history of uh, otitis media barrow challenge, no autophony, no findings on the tympanic membrane, that's when I'm thinking about the other disorders. Number one's going to be temporomandibular disorders, and then you've got all the other stuff, uh, ear, uh, ear related uh, semicircular canal dehiscence, high drops, uh, sensory neural hearing loss, conductive, even some people will posit migraine, which causes everything, right? <laughs> Blame so it that's on how, migraine. That's how right. <laughs> so that, that's how we sort it out is uh, first the history. And then looking for those key findings. Is there evidence of negative pressure? That's obstructive. If they've got autophony and the tympanic membrane moves, that's patulous. Now, if they're not actively patulous in their office, if they're not actively having symptoms, it gets more complicated. Sometimes we will literally have them run around the block or up and down some stairs, work, them, uh, work up their sweat, <laughs> come back, and now they're patchless. So we will literally do that. Or sometimes I'll just have them do 15 deep knee bends, and that's enough to get it going, and then you can see it. 